Alrighty, so it is 4.33 and we have to stop again for some fuel. I drove 226 miles, 7.6 .6 MPG. Man, I am tired, guys. Now, something weird happened. I got a, a notification saying that I had 498 miles until I needed to uh, get DEF again. But I was at a half a tank. I don't know if that's correct or not. I don't know if it had like a misreading or something. I almost don't want to get DEF. EF here because I want to see how long I can go but you know what I don't have to stop somewhere else to get DEF so I'm going to go ahead and fill up here and we can still do the math for it but so far so good um, I am super tired <sighs> and I need to edit a video too for this morning so I'll probably be here for a little bit and then we'll get back on the road let's top it off one time There it is. Okay, I'm gonna complain really quickly. I cannot stand DEF. I absolutely hate this crap. And I understand that they wanna help the environment, quote unquote, although I don't think it's really helping much of anything. But if you go to 10 truck stops, four of them will have broken DEF tanks or they just don't have it. And like, they make it illegal for you to delete your truck. Like this stuff is frustrating. Like. I'm buying two gas trucks hopefully this year and depending on how I feel about owning gas HDs, if I don't like them then I'll probably get a diesel in the future but if I do, I'm deleting it. I don't care. If I get in trouble, I get in trouble. I'm sick of this man. Like This stuff is frustrating and I feel like the manufacturers should fight back with this stuff and this stuff is freaking frustrating and if you don't get DEF, I mean your truck will go into a limp mode and you can only go like what 25 miles an hour? You know, and this stuff is not reliable. The systems are sensitive and they make it illegal for you not to be able to touch your own pickup. It's just frustrating. And like when you go to a truck stop and you're like kind of on a time scale, like, I mean, look, it's four o'clock, it's five o'clock in the morning and I, I have to fight, you know, from pump to pump to see if it works only to find out the system's down. How? Like this stuff is so important to you. Make sure it works at every fuel station. Welcome back guys. So today is the next day. We've been traveling back from Maryland going back to Utah and man it has been a trip guys. Holy smokes. But nevertheless we got to get it done. So I just got DEF. Check this out. I, I can't stand DEF pumps. Yeah, the pump was all finicky, but that's how much I bought. Let's see here, let's do the math real quickly. So 3.206, right? All right, 3.206. So this is the miles we drove. So let's see what it is. So 710.7 divided into 3.206. So 221.45 or 221.46. And let's go ahead and take a look real quickly at what it was unloaded. So this is the trip heading east, unloaded. And as you guys can see, I bought three gallons of DEF. I paid $12.52 for it. And I went 2,110.2 miles. So I got 703.4 miles to the gallon. And that's what you can expect. There was some cold weather, a lot of grade climbing. I probably could have got a little bit better if I was driving on flat roads, but for the most part, that's pretty darn good. And if you figure, this truck has a seven gallon tank, and if you multiply this by seven, you'll get 4,924 miles rounded off. My Ram that I previously had had a 5.7 gallon tank, so I couldn't go as far compared to this GMC because of that. And here's one last thing I wanna show you guys before we get back to the video. This is the Philip I just had, this is loaded. So if you think about it, this, is pretty consistent here. I get a little bit better than the computer. And the roads did get a little bit better. Uh, like I said, it was really late that night and I went to two stations. I didn't say this in the video yet, but I went to two stations and the DF tanks didn't work. That's why I was so frustrated. And I went to like three different pumps at the one I was at. So that was the last pump and I just was at my wits at that point. But I spent $112.84 for 27.597 gallons of diesel. Drove 226.3 miles. 
computer said I was getting 7.60 and I got a little bit better. So I will fill this out. I do not know how many trips I did. I just kind of just put it out here just so I can get started. But we will go over this by the end of this video and you guys will see how much I spent heading back west. Now what's crazy is the computer's pretty consistent. It's saying I'm getting like 7.6, but for some weird reason, I get a little bit better at the pump every time. Not, not every time, but I've only checked it like maybe a couple times since I've been driving, but uh, the last time I got diesel, I did do the math and I'm getting a little bit better. So I'm doing about 80 miles an hour uh, where, where it permits. And quite honestly, like, the roads have been clear, it's cold outside, so I find that the truck is just performing extremely well. But we're gonna go ahead and get back on the road. We're in Kansas. My goal was to get to Kansas. I took a nap for like an hour or so, and then I kept going until I couldn't go anymore, and I stopped here. So I'm like halfway through Kansas right now. But man, guys, this is, this is a trip. And, so far so good let me show you guys something real quickly um, as far as your trailering goes check this out maintenance I've already towed this trailer 2,362 miles so I started off at the tip of Florida and then went all the way up to Maryland and now I'm here in Kansas so that's 2,360 miles so I'll check back in at some point hopefully today we make it to Utah I'm hoping so because I am tired of driving and towing it's okay to drive unloaded but when you're towing even though this trailer is pretty easy it's still hard all right so do you guys see this Chevy Silverado here see how they have the mirrors closed I thought about doing the same thing but I don't think you're gonna get that much fuel economy gain from that I'm not sure why he's doing it maybe maybe he's trying to get better fuel economy because <laughs> these roads are pretty bad but um, we have 433 miles on this road, and then we're gonna make our first turn. 958 more miles to go. It's saying I'll get there tonight at 918. You hear that, Hannah? I'm coming home, baby. So here's an update on the trip. Right now, there's a huge snowstorm. You probably can tell the whiteout around me. Um, the roads are clear, though, which is good. But there are some snow drifts on the highways, so it's kind of hard to really maintain a high speed right now and my gut is telling me to keep going on 70 because about two and a half hours ahead is a winter storm warning and there's a lot of traffic but I could potentially cut north and catch 80 and continue to go west but there's a winter storm in that area too so I don't know which one is worse so I think I want to stay on 70 my navigation I have two they're both telling me basically the same thing to stay straight and I think that's what I'm gonna do but this is the only thing that's hard about the winter time guys like when you're traveling it's really hard to think about these types of things because you got to be safe obviously but what I'm concerned about is is whether I should keep traveling I mean I don't have to get home obviously you know I could stay in a hotel one night or maybe a couple nights until this snowstorm passes. But when I left Maryland, I thought for sure by the time I got to this point, this storm would have already gone. But man, it seems like it's kind of sticking around here. And uh, yeah, it's just, I hate driving in snow. I hate it. Normally I don't drive in snow. I, I'll cancel a trip or whatever if it's snowing. So wish me luck. And yeah, truck's doing great. My DEF range is actually saying 497 miles. I was hoping I could get home on this on this last fill up, but I may have to get some DEF before I get home. I'm still 655 miles away. If I were to cut up north, I'd add another three hours to the trip. So that's probably what? That's probably about 250, 300 miles, give or take, in that ballpark. And I don't really want to do that. So I think that if I'm going to add that much more time to my trip, I should just go through it and if it's too bad I can either turn back around get a hotel or I can stop somewhere and just set up shop somewhere but um I did not bring a shovel and I meant to buy a second one for my truck while we were traveling or while I was traveling and then that way if I needed to I could always just have something to dig out if need be or something like that but um, we'll, 
we'll see. I'll check back in a little bit, but so far so good. Um, truck's been doing great, as I've said in a few other videos. And I have almost 11,000 miles on it, and it needs a oil change, basically. That's something I don't like about the GMs. Like, they don't have that 15,000 mile interval, but they don't use as much oil as the Cummins, too. So that's why I think the Cummins has that longer oil change interval. It's like 15,000 miles. And that's kind of why they give you the 15,000 mile oil interval, because if you're doing a lot of this type of traveling, I mean, Chuck, you put 10,000 miles in your truck in a month or two, so really, probably even sooner than that, if you think about it. And you don't want to have to keep changing your oil every 7,500 miles or so. But like I said, I'll check back in a little bit and let you guys know where we are. But here you guys go. I wanted to show you really quickly what I'm seeing. And yeah, it's definitely pretty crazy. It's not snowing right now. It's just cloudy. Like I don't think I've ever seen this before. But yeah, the roads are clear. And I hope that by the time I get past Denver, because that's where all the traffic is, um, hopefully it'll have cleared up. But let me, maybe I can show it to you here. So yeah, right there. And see right here in Denver, you can cut up north, as I mentioned. But the traffic is starting to die down a little bit. But honestly, guys, it's, yeah. It's just one of those things, man. Like, this is what you have to deal with in the wintertime when you're traveling. And when you're towing a trailer, no fun. We're crossing through Colorado right now as we speak. The roads are not the best, but they are clear, which is good. I'm going about 45 miles an hour, which kind of stinks, but there is snow on the road, so I want to try to take it easy. So I'm just going to kind of stay behind this semi. But I'm hoping that the roads clear up as you go further down. But I will sign back in once I get home, guys. Um, I am definitely ready to be done. I have 436 more miles to go. It's 4.30, I've stopped like three or four times. Just to clear my brain, like it's really hard to drive like this. I've pretty much driven, what, 1,700 miles? About 1,700 miles, guys, in about a day or so. So, like I said, I will check back in when I get home, and then we will put all the numbers for the fuel mileage and everything like that in the spreadsheet, okay? Well, I made it back home safe and sound. That was a tough trip. Um, much respect to hot shotters and guys and girls that drive semis. That is a hard job. And if there's anything you learn from this video, if you do plan on traveling, get a larger fuel tank. If I was gonna keep this truck a little bit longer, I probably would have gotten a larger fuel tank before I left, because I knew I was gonna do this trip probably two weeks before I did it. And whew, it was tough. Anytime you have to stop to zero and then accelerate back up to 75, 80 miles an hour, you're losing a lot of fuel, especially after you see how many times I filled up on this trip. So here it is. This is the total trip. As I mentioned, I did not get every single fill up from Florida to Maryland. And the only reason why is because I was on a time scale and I just didn't have time to pull my camera out and start recording. I showed you guys up to here. So here's the other four. If you are planning on traveling, towing, I strongly recommend go ahead and upgrade to a larger fuel tank. I wish GM would offer that as an option because if I was a dealer, every truck that I ordered would have a large fuel tank. And 36 gallons is actually pretty good, especially better than my Ram was. It was at 31 gallons. So I got five extra gallons of diesel, which really helped towing and driving unloaded. Now, as far as the totals go, here it is. I spent about $1,000 for this uh, trip and here's how much diesel I purchased how many miles I drove on the trip again I did not get one of the Phillips leaving Maryland but apart from that I think it was uh, actually it probably it's probably two trips maybe because I think it was like 2100 miles but nevertheless here's the average that the computer showed and then here's the average at the pump so still got better overall and if you don't remember, I will put the part two for unloaded after this video. So be sure to click it if you want to watch it. But here are the numbers for that. Be sure to pause it. And then here is the total. So I spent $1,530 for the diesel. I purchased 336 gallons of it. And on this trip that I 
recorded, I got 3,822 miles, but in total, I drove a little bit over 6,000 miles uh, to Florida, up to Maryland, and back to Utah. And then, yeah, here is basically with the pump, and then this is with the computer. But I hope this video was helpful, guys. Now, here's the next thing I have to do. The reason why I brought the black trailer to Utah was because I want to do more towing videos. I also wanted this one to get into the garage because the fifth wheel was too tall. But uh, I will find out tomorrow if I can get this trailer in there because it's eight and a half feet wide. And my garage might be eight and a half feet wide too because I just saw it when I got home. And yeah, I may not be able to get this stupid trailer in there. So that's going to suck. But. I also have a RV you guys have not seen. You will see it this week. I will unveil it to you guys. So stay tuned for that. I wanted that one to be the only one sitting in the driveway or on the side yard. So hopefully we can get this black trailer in there. Or I might have to find a storage facility for it. But be sure to subscribe. Make sure your bell notifications are on. See you guys in the next video.